What would it be like to glide to the edge of space? Well, aeronauts attached to the Perlin 2 project are about to find out. The project is going to attempt to set a new world record for the highest wing-borne flight in history, and the $7.5 million project is going to take off later this year, getting close to the Earth's stratosphere, the very edge of space. Well, I became aware that uh, this sort of thing would be possible um, in about 1992, a long time ago. And I thought we would have done it 10 by 10 years ago, but it's taken a long time. But the, uh, the understanding of the uh, phenomenon really came about as a result of research into the ozone hole in about 1980. And uh, at that time, uh, the uh, atmospheric science community started studying the polar weather where the ozone hole originates. And, uh, and they learned a lot more about the structure up there. And uh, eventually, uh, one, of the, um, one of the scientists got some beautiful graphics that showed that these ripples in the atmosphere, these uh, waves that are sort of analogous to ocean waves in some, some respects, uh, form over the mountains in the polar regions. And I had a look at this data, and so almost instantly I realized we could fly a glider here. Uh, I had been uh, testing high altitude airplanes for 25 or 30 years in various capacities. And so I, I had a good idea of what was possible and how you'd, what kind of an airplane it would take and, and could you go that high and it almost instantly a, a apparent that uh, we could do this. Can you just describe for us exactly what's going to be happening in Argentina with the Perlin 2, what the, what the p purpose of the mission is? The purpose is multifold. Uh, we have a very large educational component, um, scientific component, and then of course setting a world record. So kind of three different aspects of it. And the scientific and atmospheric component is just really charting unknown territory in terms of we'll be able to be in straight level flight, collecting all sorts of atmospheric data, analyzing chemistry, uh, cloud physics, um, aerodynamics, all sorts of very interesting things. And also um, learning more about how this polar vortex and the stratosphere interacts with the lower level troposphere and the, where we live down in the tropopause, troposphere. And the tropopause is actually the border between the stratosphere and the troposphere where we live. So we'll be learning a lot about that interaction. These are manned gliders, aren't they? This isn't sort of just like an unmanned drone. This will be somebody who's flying a glider, and I believe it's about, what, 10,000 feet? Um, well, we, go ahead. Go ahead, Aner. Okay. Uh, well, we towed the glider up to about 10,000 feet over the Andes. Uh, where these phenomena occur is uh, only in certain regions, and it's near the poles in the vicinity of some mountain ranges. And the best place we've... Uh, we've figured on Earth is uh, in the southern end of Argentina, uh, just to the east of the Andes. So we, we tow the glider up to the Andes at about 10,000 feet. We, can, we cast off and let the tow plane go home, and then we ride the, the winds up, uh, up there. In 2006, I went up there with Steve Fawcett, and we went up to about 51,500 feet over the Andes. And it proved that indeed uh, these phenomena really are uh, potentially uh, can be taken much higher with a, with a specially built glider. We had a, a standard uh, production glider uh, we used and um, it worked fine. We went up 51,000 and, and proved that it could be done. So that's when we embarked on the more ambitious Perland 2 project to go to 90,000 feet.